we're going to look at some of these passages about what they use for dispensational salvation. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. I mean, it's Hebrews 11, excuse me, right? Hebrews 11. Now, I'm not going to read all of this. Now, what I want you all to do is to read it. Read verses, Hebrews chapter 11, from verses 4 all the way to the end of the chapter. So, I've explained this to you about these Old Testament saints that they had faith and works. That's what you're going to find out, faith and works. So, some of these people are going to get mad at me saying, oh, the reason why that he's going through so many verses in a bullet mode is that he doesn't want you to study. Well, no, it's because the reason why is I'm trying to cram in all thing in a small amount of time. I don't have the benefit and the luxury of time like you do, turning 60 years of age with my skin turning white, dedicating hundreds of videos because my church members need to hear more stuff. They can't just hear me kicking and trying to expose the wrong doctrine of your little groupie out there. I can't waste time with that. Now, another thing to understand is not all people who do not believe in dispensational salvations, I'm not kicking those people, okay? Sometimes they're just genuinely trying to search and study and they have genuine questions and it's going to take time, I understand that. But who I'm against is that those guys who are calling out Bible-believing preachers and then addressing them by name, critiquing them, thinking that they're dumb, they're stupid and all that, so I'm going to treat you like you're dumb and you're stupid because the scriptures show it. That's Okay, now in Hebrews chapter 11, when you read all of that, their excuse is this. Because this shows faith and works, in Hebrews chapter 11, I have to explain, that way people don't get lost, and then I'll explain as best as I can. So Old Testament salvation, we obviously know, is different from Christian salvation. Christian salvation was faith, not works. Whereas the Old Testament, that you had faith and works. Now, their way around it is when you look at Hebrews chapter 11, this is their argument. Obviously, when you read Hebrews 11, you see faith and works, right? That's pretty obvious. By faith, Noah, see, he had a faith. Then you see a work. He built an ark. By faith, Abraham, he had faith. Moved outside of his homeland. There's a work. So this is pretty obvious. Dispensational salvation is literally looking at the verse and just telling you what it simply is. So it said faith. Why? Because it said faith. Why is it works? Because it is a work when you move to a different homeland, when you build an ark. It is a work when you're suffering torture and persecution, if you read Hebrews 11. Okay? We're just simply reading as it says. That's what makes us King James dispensationalists. Because we believe in reading the word as it says in the King James Bible, and we rightly divide the salvation. These guys, they refuse to divide the salvation, and they don't read the King James Bible as it says. That shows something concerning if you want to be a King James dispensationalist truly. Now, you know how they interpret this? This is so complicated. We interpret it like very simply, right? Very simply. All you have to do is that it said faith and works. It said that. But we just divide it. That's in the Old Testament. Isn't that simple? Now, these guys make it complicated. What they do is, no, what this is is that uh, uh, this is truly salvation by faith alone, not works. But those works are just simply demonstrating their faith. Now, how is that not really salvation by faith alone, right? See, they're trying to complicate the argument. So let me interpret it for you so that it can be easier for you to understand. What they mean is this. When Noah built that ark, his work, that was just simply a work showing his faith. But his salvation was really actually by faith. Okay, so what did he believe in? Noah's salvation by faith was that he believed what God told him. That's the idea. So what these guys are going to argue is that these Old Testament saints, their salvation by faith, it may be different from us, having faith in Jesus, but they were still saved by faith alone. No, because they believed in what God said to them. That's what they argue. So because Noah believed what God said about the flood or the ark, that's what saved him, that faith. So when he built the ark, 
that had nothing to do with it. That was just a work showing it. See, that's how they argue, see? Now, you can tell they had to take a lot of time and thinking to explain that to you. Now, the idea is this, is that this is easily debunked. Okay, let's assume that this faith that Noah had about believing what God said about building an ark or that there's a flood, that that's what saved him, and his work of building the ark showed it. Here's an easy debunking to that. What if he then didn't build that ark? What if he didn't do that work of building the ark? Then that invalidates his faith of what he believed in, that God told him that there would be a flood and he has to build the ark. So you know what that means? Whether you like it or not, that work is necessary for his salvation. See, this is so easy. It's the same thing with Abraham and a lot of people. Now, here's another thing. If they say right here that, no, 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 no. Actually, no. Uh, even if Noah didn't do that work, or Abraham or all these other people, even if they didn't do that work, that didn't count for their salvation. So that had nothing to do with it. They were still saved by faith. Then my question is this then what is their salvation by faith in? Because their salvation by faith, like what you said, was what God told them. Okay, on what? On what? Be specific. Oh, well, with Noah, God told him there would be a flood and build the ark. Okay, that was that faith he believed in. What if he didn't do that work then? Then that faith didn't count. See that? So whether you like it or not, that work is necessary. Then they make us so confused. No, that work is actually not really necessary for their salvation. Okay, then what did he have faith in then? What did he have to believe in? That there would be a flood and there would be, he had to build an ark. Okay, what if he didn't do that work then? Right. Then he, see, you see this confusion? See, this is a circular pattern. But they cleverly disguised it where you don't see it because they just simply use words like works demonstrating their faith. They just simply say stuff like, it's not that work that really saved them. It's their faith that saved them. They just believe what God told them. But see, what they refuse to do is get into more specifics. As long as it sounds good and it's abstract and you don't dig into it, then they fool you. They trick you. That's the idea. So here's something that they're going to have to uh, agree with then. If they then have no choice but to believe that these people, they had to... These works demonstrated their faith. Otherwise, their faith is not genuine. Their salvation by faith is not genuine. They have to have these works. Isn't this lordship salvation? If you're truly saved by this faith, your works will show. Yeah. See, they don't like that. No. They're trying to say, oh, no, we're not lordship salvation. No, you are, if you're going to be honest, because if they didn't have that work, then that faith didn't count then. Look at that. See, this is a uh, this is circular pattern, circular motion. Bible. Now, some other arguments that they might pull up, which is perhaps some pretty good questions, but to be quite honest, it's easily debunked. It's easily debunked. So, turn to Romans chapter 2, please. Romans chapter 2, and then we'll read verse 13. Romans chapter 2, and then we'll read verse 13. So, let me explain this point right here. Romans chapter 2. And then we'll read verse 13. So here's another issue concerning these guys. Now here's something. Why do they have to try so hard? Why do they have to try so hard to get rid of what the verse is actually saying? Because here's the thing. If they insist, no, we're going by what the word exactly says, my question to them is this. As a first-timer who's genuine and without bias, without any bias about Oh, I strongly believe faith alone, not by works. You know, without that bias, if you're an honest Bible reader at the beginning, how come many people, when they read these verses, will normally think it's faith and works? And that's why you have so many cults and religions who use these verses to show you faith and works for salvation. That's right. Their problem, however, is that they don't divide. What we do is we read it and admit the honesty, but we divide. That's why we're dispensationalists. Well, these guys aren't dispensationalists. We're the ones dividing it. You're not. Okay, now let's look at Romans chapter 2, verse 13. Now, there are three problems that some people will bring up. Now, these are logical. I'll admit these are logical. Some of these are sincere people. But to be very honest, they're still weak logical arguments. 
If you insist that people were saved by, you know, faith and works for salvation in the Old Testament, then their one problem is, then everyone but Jews went to hell. That's their argument. But it's easily debunked. Romans chapter 2, verse 13 through 15 shows you, no, the Gentiles who do not have the law follow their conscience. I'll read it, okay, in case some people accuse me for skimming. Oh, he's just skimming. No, I just don't have the luxury of time, okay? So let me just read it for you. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the what? Doers of the law shall be what? Justified. See, Paul recognized that. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, see, they don't have the Old Testament law, do by nature the things contained in the law. That is true. It is human nature within our conscience to go by works. What is right? That is human conscious, human nature. These having not a law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. See that? So the conscience is going to bear witness, and God will judge them for that. That's why we don't worry about the Gentiles. Because if you want to say that about the Gentiles, well, they didn't know about Old Testament salvation. What about Gentiles today? Do you know how many of them never heard about New Testament salvation or the gospel of Jesus? What are you going to do about that? See, you know what's more simple to believe? God is very understanding of people, so he'll judge them by how they do in their conscience. That's the idea. And depending how well they're sincere in their conscience, what's he going to do? He's going to show them more truth like he did with many of you, right? That's why you eventually heard the gospel. If you're in the Old Testament, that's why you'll eventually hear the Old Testament law or anything else. That's what God will do. But he's going to judge them by conscience. He's not an unfair God. Now, they bring up this argument. Well, then what about the people who didn't know about salvation being changed? So all of a sudden, let's say that you know, I'm a person in the Old Testament, and then all of a sudden I'm in the church age, and I'm only one day in there. But I didn't know about that. Okay, so what about these people then? I guess they're going to go to hell if they died, and they didn't know about this new change of salvation. Again, Romans 2, they, God judges you by conscience. God is understanding. So he's not just going to send some guy 0.5 seconds later after Jesus died on the cross, oh, you're going to burn in hell. No, he's going to go by conscience. See, God is very obvious. Now, here's their third argument. Then they're going to say, how do you know which works to do then? Okay, then if you claim by works, then what are the works? And didn't Paul said they couldn't keep the whole law? So what do they do? You know what the simple answer again is? Romans 2 by conscience. See, that's why God judges by conscience. I obviously don't know what's on your conscience. You don't know what's in mine. So how can I tell you the works? Only God knows. So God is understanding, sympathetic. It's the same thing what God does with people today and every time. He understands people. He'll judge them by their heart, by their conscience. So we are in no place to judge them at their heart. And yes, it is true. Jews cannot keep the whole law. No one could. But you know what the simple answer to that is, which is what we believe in. We believe that's why they could not go to heaven. They had to go to Abraham's bosom, which is located in hell. And remember, hell's a location where all sins are kept. But Abraham's bosom is a place of comfort where hell is located. So they went there. Why? Because God's not cruel. God understands. Well, they were saved by faith, but again, I argued all the way at the beginning, what was the faith then in then? Yeah. You're arguing for an empty faith. Now, I'm not going to go through all that notion again, okay? So, what did they have to do? They had to go, it's more simple to say, it's more honest to say, by Hebrews 11 or any verse in the Bible, they had faith believing in what God said, and there were works. Why? Because it said faith, it said works. He showed works. Okay, so God put them here at a temporary basis. That makes a lot of sense. And then the cross of Jesus Christ had to pay it all for them, and then they went up. That's why no one kept the whole law. It's obvious. So they went down here. Jesus fulfilled the law for them, and they went up. Amen. That's what makes sense. But God is not a God where he's going to give them some empty faith or empty grace and then allow them to go scot-free because sin must be punished with hellfire. 
See, they accuse us for attacking the attribute of God's grace. No, you're attacking the attribute of God's grace and His holiness together because we argue His grace is only. His full grace where you can get true salvation by grace is at the cross. I'm not going to go 2,000 years, 4,000 years before that without His death and His payment and think that I can go scot-free. And so you accuse us we're bad for works? You're more worse than us by emptying the works and emptying the faith. That's even worse. So at least we can give some kind of support over here. So they had to have the grace right here to pay them what they had in their faith and that the cross of Jesus Christ had to fulfill all the law for them and the works. Why? Why did they have to have that faith and work? Simple, because there was no cross of Jesus. So they had to do something. God had to judge sin. That's the idea. So that's the argument against these notions.